Hey y'all, it's Bobby. I have a new project I just completed I wanted to share with you. This is a gable style box using the Bee House paper collection from Country Craft Creations. I created this box to hold all of my cards and there's just a couple of things, well just one thing that I, I don't have in here and that's because I'm going to use it every day. So I wanted to share with you the box and the contents, how much it actually holds. Uh, in the front, I created a little tuck spot with an old Martha Stewart border punch. And I made a little truck with a die that I have in my stash. It has a milk can and a, some kind of a container there. I just thought it was really cute. And I did use the papers other than the glitter out of my stash. I used the design paper here. And on this top edge, I just uh, cut some of my scraps into strips and just made a little diagonal piece to go in the top so that I could pull all the colors together. In this hole I just used a die to put a, a border around the, the little handle. On the side I have another piece of the design paper. Let me see if this is where you can see it. I don't want to get out of frame. There is that side. Here is the back and I cut out one of the little honey jars a bee and then I made a butterfly with a um, die that I have in my stash and the wings pop out on it like that it's really pretty okay so that goes in here and this oh and here's the fourth side, or the other end. Let me make sure you're seeing it. I never can tell if I'm in frame or not. I have such a small working area. Then when you take the open the flaps, and this little paper clip came in one of my with one of my cards, and I just thought I'd put it there, just to be pretty. Now look how much this thing holds. I have a mask that someone sent me with the bees on it. Isn't that cute? Then I have a bar of lavender soap. It says to take the stress away, melt the stress away. Then I have all of these cards. And I have some small journals. <coughs> Excuse me. What I did to um, economize on space is I cut the return address off of everybody's envelope and I taped it to the back of their card so that I can remember who it's from. You see this one, I've got her address on there. Isn't that card pretty? It's just beautiful. It's amazing the talent that's in this group. Here's another one that's really cute in that darling. That is from Lynn. I'm not sure how you, is it Nado? I'm not sure how you say it. Just really pretty cards. Just because. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry. My cold is better. I just have a cough. And there's the inside of the box. It's lined all the way around. So that's my project. <coughs> drink. That is my project. Sorry about that. So if you'll stay tuned, there will be a tutorial on how this is put together and then you can choose whatever papers. And it doesn't have to be this particular collection if you want to make it for something else. Look how big of an album you could get in there. And it's super easy to create this box. It was just really quick. It's only got one small piece of chipboard for the bottom. The rest of it is all design paper and black artisan cardstock. I'm going to put my goodies back in here. So stay tuned. Following this walkthrough, you'll see the tutorial and it'll show you how to put it all together. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye.
All right, everyone, I am building the gable box today. And this is a real easy box to put together. This is going to be more of a process uh, tutorial as uh, instead of just a step-by-step. -step. This is super easy to make. I use the Bee House paper from Country Craft Creations and the Black Artisan Cardstock. And I have a piece of chipboard that is four and a half by eight. And I just wrapped it like you would a cover. And I added a piece of the design paper for the base. So it's real easy to do. You need two pieces for the front and the back. Like this. And you will have a cut a uh, PDF for this border. And you need two pieces like this for the ends. And this one I have completely put my design paper on and I punched a hole in it. I did use a small die that I had in my stash and you can use a punch. What I did was I cut out the yellow like I wanted it and then I laid it on top of the black and I used this little die and I punched through both layers so that they would match perfectly. And then I hadn't glued it down yet. Then I took the yellow off and I added the larger die. Just one size larger so that it would leave me a little black edge around there. And you can see these are the two that popped out when I first ran it through. And then when I used the larger one to cut around the yellow, I got this little tiny ring. So it's just really tiny circles. Um, let me see. I'll tell you. Where's my blue? I like this one because it gives me... This is an inch... Let me see from cutting edge to cutting edge. I think it's an inch. Yes, this is an inch or maybe seven eighths. And this one is just slightly larger. And it is an inch and an eighth. So I would say seven eighths and an inch and an eighth. So those are the two dies I used. Let me put them back in the little thing so I don't lose them. They're easy to get knocked off on the floor. Okay, so what we're going to do is, oh, and you will have a PDF, and the only thing you really need on the PDF is this top edge and this top edge right here. I give you the size of the, the piece that you need to cut from top all the way around, the rectangle that you need, and then if you'll cut out your PDF and just trace it with your pencil, and I cut mine out with scissors because... I don't have a Cricut, uh, not a big Cricut, I have the small uh, Cricut Joy. And do the same thing with this one. Cut out your piece and then just trim this out and trace it and cut out your top border. So what we need to do is score these. Let me move the bottom out of the way. Now this one is going to wrap around and I've scored it so that it is the same that it's going to need to wrap and I want to make sure that it's going to wrap and in order to pull it up tight it looks like it'll be okay. I'm going to go ahead and glue it down and I have uh, just cut out the corners here and I'm going to taper this just a little bit. So we don't have any bulk. And I just added design paper to the inside. And then on the outside edge, I used uh, the My Colors. And let me see if I still have the... see what the yellow one is. The yellow one is called Jonquil and the brown one, let's see if I still have any of it. I've got another full sheet I can pull out and tell you. Oh, the brown one is called Allspice and I inked everything with um, Tim Holtz uh, vintage photo. 
so I am just going to add some glue to the inside of this tab. And I'm going to attach it right there. Oops. A little overkill on the glue there. So I'm going to push it right up to the score line because I want it to be flush. to sit up tight. Now on this you can put all your design paper on with the exception of the outside of the front and back. Okay. I don't think this is up tight. line this up in your printer or your printer in your scoreboard and lay it right along this um, edge and rescore it oops just to make sure you've got enough leeway to wrap it because we've got plenty I scored um, scored I cut an extra inch on the sides so that I would have enough to do that. And I just want to make sure that it's going to wrap around it and not leave a hole. There. Okay, so now we'll do the other side. And I'm going to score it. Actually, I think this time I will score it at 7 eighths. Just to make sure I've got plenty of room. And I'll score it this way at 7 eighths. smart was it so let's score an inch at the bottom yeah. and we're going to cut out these little boxes at the bottom where it crosses I first thought that I would do some type of a, a book and I've got these dies that make slotted pages and I thought well that would be really cute and then I could put a card into each slot and save all the cards that way, but then I started getting um, hand lotions and soaps and a mask and journals and things that wouldn't fit into the slots. So that's when I decided to make this project. So let's finish this under and bring it back around. This piece can be added in here. Oh, I got one more score mark on this. You want to line it up right where these 
two pieces jet out and you want to score there and make sure that it lines up good it's not perfect I don't have it in there straight let me do it like this make sure I get it straight oops we can burnish on this score line as well. So let's trim these up. I'm going to taper this a little bit. This one. And let me check these and make sure I don't have any overhang here. I do it right here a little bit. Trim it up just like you would an album cover. And this one needs a little bit off. Okay. Alright. Now we can put this piece on the inside. Doesn't look wide enough. I don't think, I'm going to cut another one for that. I don't think that looks wide enough. I'll do that after I put it together. Let's go ahead and add it on here. So it's going to sit right on there like that. see if my outside pieces fit. It doesn't look quite right either. I think it's too long and too narrow. Yep, um, I don't know what I was measuring. I'll have to cut another piece. All right, let me take a pause here, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I recut the pieces that I needed to, and I went ahead and added the inside piece to this one, and also the outside pieces. So this will be the basic of the box, or the side pieces in the bottom. And these little flanges will wrap around. So the next thing we need is the two large pieces. And they have to be scored. Oh God, I left my pen out again. Jeez, I'm so bad at that. Okay. Scoring tool. So these should score roughly at 1 and 7 eighths and 4. Let's see if this is going to hit at 4. I'm going to have to move it down just a little bit to get it to score at 4. And then this one, when I move it down to make this match 4, then this one comes in right at 2. So you score it across there. Okay, and we'll do, oh, we need 1 inch at the bottom. Let me do an inch here. So we'll do the same thing to the second one, 1 inch. this up to I 
Is this one a little bit longer? Let me see if I cut them the same. No, they're the same. Okay, so this one I'm going to score. This one's hitting at four. And an eighth when I move it down. <coughs> Excuse me. And this one is again hitting it too. Okay. So there's those two pieces scored. Oops. Put this back in here. So we want to score the one inch under. We want to score this one towards the inside, and this one back towards you. same margin up there, but it should work out okay. We'll do the same thing with this one. And then this one back towards you. And that one looks better than the first one. Okay, so what we have to do is attach these so that they go like this. And then these side pieces will wrap around. And it looks like an exact match like my measurement showed so let me rescore this I'm going to rescore it at three quarters of an inch instead of an inch why it's off I don't know but now's the time to make the adjustment. And that extra quarter inch is not going to show because uh, we're going to have design paper on it. But you need to make that adjustment now. See if that takes care of it. There's always a way around, or I shouldn't say always, but Usually there's a way around something like that. Okay, let's fold it on that new score line. I'm glad I didn't glue it down without checking. That would have been horrible. And it doesn't look like it's scoring straight, is it? Yes, it is. Let's see what we get. Now we match perfectly. And that will wrap around. And then these will hook over that. Cute. Okay, let's glue that down. Oh, let me make sure if I need to trim it first. I think I will. Just a tiny. Only trim from your three-quarter, though. Don't trim from the inch. Okay. Let's 
get some glue on here. We'll slide this up underneath to the three quarter. added my yellow to the bottom. I started to and I thought, ah, not yet. Got to put my side pieces on first, or the front and back. I get in a hurry and want to see the finished project. <laughs> get ahead of myself. So let's check this one. Just a little bit more room. That's too much. I think I just gave it too much space that time. adjustment I need to make. Now let's try again. Let's see what we got this time. Okay, now we're good. So we can glue that one down. edges real quick. Just a tiny. Okay, now the glue. off on that one quite a bit. But, it's fixed. So let's burnish that. All's well that ends well, right? Okay, now we can put the yellow piece on the bottom. Um, 
out too narrow now that I've changed it I think it's too narrow let me see well not a whole lot yeah I'm just not real happy with that go away there's some kind of a fly or something in here scoot around yeah I want a wider piece let me see if I've got a wider piece here. No, nope, that's narrower. Well, let me see what this is. That's wider but shorter. see what I need here. Let me cut another piece. Let me put my pen back in here. Alright, I'm going to cut it at 8. because my original chipboard was eight by four and a half and it may require that long of a piece because of all the wrapping. So I'm gonna do four and a half. is a little bit too long. We'll make it seven and seven eighths. And let's ink that. I think that should be fine. Here, I'm just going to leave the yellow on the bottom. There, I'm going to do design paper. Turn it over. That's okay. Go ahead and take them out. They won't make that much noise. Alright, on the inside, I have cut two. <laughs> These are scraps, so it's not a big deal. They need to be deeper. They need to be seven and seven eighths. I believe that's what these are. Yes. So that's okay. The se seven and seven eighths. Excuse me. This needs to be four and seven eighths. Okay. Let's 
find it. This one. No, that ain't the one. I want the one that's got the paint speckles on the back. Well, this one will work. safe because I can always take a little bit more off. So there's one piece at five. And a second piece at five. Okay, let's see how those look. I use these in an album or something. I'll get rid of none of it. It's too pretty. Okay, four and seven eighths was fine. Actually, yeah, I still think four and seven eighths is fine. So let me trim both of these off and we'll ink them and put them down. ink these and add them to the inside. That one still looks like it's a bit, a bit long. Take just a smidge off of it. See if that's, yep, that's better. Let me ink that one side again. It's always worth doing a dry fit. Okay, just as I went to add these two pieces, the camera shut off. It was time for new batteries. So I went ahead and added those because I already had the glue out. Now I want to turn it over real quick. I want this to be my front so that this is right side up and on. Can't add anything to this just yet because that's where the sides wrap around. But I can add these pieces that I cut for on here. And I've already inked them. So let's get some glue on those. It's 
easier to add them now while it's flat. And then I took a bunch of my scraps and cut it into strips and made these little pieces to go in here like that and bring all the colors together and all I did was take a piece of uh, white cardstock and I cut it just a little bit smaller than the brown and I started in the corner and ran my strips diagonally and I did um, ink each of them in uh, the vintage photo so it kind of gives it a quilted look and I'm going to put some glue on that. And put that in place. That fly or whatever it is is driving me crazy. Let me glue this into place. side as well. And, and I've got my pieces cut for the front. I just can't add them till I wrap the sides around. And this one. To put glue on these tabs and bring these up and I will attach them with a um, paper a paper clip a um, clothespin make sure it's not going to overlap that one's going to be fine that I get a nice snug seal. Put a paper clip on here to hold it so I can lay it down and burnish it. I know you can't see that. I can't help it though. I need to burnish that. side the same way. Make sure your corners here match. Again. 
these two. It's hard to get a hold of all these layers at once. little flap. Uh, whatever that is is driving me crazy. I wish it'd go away. It needs a new home. Alright, now I'm going to match these corners up. together and these will hook on there and hold them shut. Isn't that cute? Alrighty. Well, don't pop off. Here we go. That's really cute. Now all I need to do is put my front pieces on, but I'm going to let it sit up for 10-15 minutes before I do that. Make sure everything's good and dry. And then I can add some embellishments to this gold edge. I don't know that I'm going to put anything on there. I may put gold on it. I haven't decided, but I will be back with you. I'm going to let this sit up for a little bit. Alright, I'll be back shortly.